the hermetic principle of mentalism, an embodiment of the fact that all is mind. We're here for mystical bullshit, not a Neil deGrasse Tyson lecture. And this leads us to the longest quote of the series, creation as defined by the Hidden Hand AMA. It is possible through meditation to totally reduce the illusion that you now experience that creates a separation, an illusory separation, to what it actually is, a total illusion. God is a dirty word for spirit, and spirit is a word unconscious of itself as creator. Hey, we're finally here! After four videos, we're finally talking about the first session of the raw material. The goal of this series is to take our favorite arcane text and break it down into something more digestible for the average person. And with that being said, having highlighted the type of insanity that we're going to be dealing with throughout the past few installments of this series, it's time to delve headfirst into Ra's first contact. The hypnotically poetic nature of Ra's communications have forever graced the worlds of UFOlogy, religion, esotericism, occultism, spirituality, and philosophy. Offering a revolutionary approach to theology, the raw material is not only generally overlooked by the average seeker, but also often quickly disregarded due to the intensity of the message. Build existence, the different realms of conscious reality, and the synonyms between the life described in the heavens from the prophets of old, rhyming with the celestial neighborhood depicted throughout the Law of One channelings. There's no other work out there that shakes up the status quo quite like the message laid out to us by Venusian group Soul Ra. Digging our heels into the ground and turning our eye to session 1.0 of the material, Carla leaves her body through trance and Ra greets us through a narrow band vibration. Having spent 19 years perfecting the art, the group's efforts in channeling have now fruited in Ra's communications of the information that is always and ever the same. Now again, if you're unfamiliar with the Law of One channelings, keep in mind that LNL Research has a channeling archive dating back over 50 years, which lists a variety of other Law of One channelings. We begin our interpretation of the material with Ra's introduction in Session 1. After some clarification on their specific reasons for being here, we are immediately thrown into the Whirlwind which is the Confederation of Planets in the service of the Infinite Creator, Infohazard. Sin. Sin City was a We've touched on these things in the intro videos, but stirring the theological pot is always going to be controversial and tying it into an alleged space government is a bombed consensus reality that most people interested in the Law of One channelings kind of just awkwardly accept. Perhaps God and his order of angels up in heaven, or Devaic realms without samsaric attachment, or even the Roman refinement of the Greek pantheon, who, hint hint, share the same names as the literal planets in our solar system. Perhaps these terms mix like water and oil in a historical context, but in the eyes of modernity, maybe these are all cultural interpretations of the natural world, and this connection has merely eluded the eye of secular thought... somehow. We will keep working at grounding this energy and polishing the conceptual poverty related to these topics as the series continues, but for the moment we'll thank public school and good Christian education for the mess we're left to clean up. Jumping back to the material, Ra goes on to say, The Confederation of Planets and the service of the Infinite Creator has only one important statement. That statement, my friends, as you know, is all things, all of life, all of the creation is part of one original thought. With it now being implied that the statement deserves its own trilogy of mediocre YouTube content, let it be said that the Ra contact can be understood as the most impressive feat of omniscience recorded in modern history. We're not reading tea leaves anymore, pulling information straight out of the void and transcribing it into a language legible to humans is how our intuition finds a path of development that reaches towards its crown. Also, despite dedicating a lot of time to this in previous videos, I am once again going to secularize the word God as to not alienate audiences unimpressed by trad religion. If you hear the word God in your head when the Law of One channeling speak of the Creator, 
Think of the word creator as a harmonization between the masculine principle of the universe and the feminine principle of nature. Mirroring our modern intuitive use of the words universe and nature allow this to form a much less frustrating frame of reference when working with Ra's use of the word creator. The creator, as described by the law of one channelings, is no more than what is real, all that there is, the one infinite creator. And so, for the time being, it's irrelevant as to whether the creation that the raw aliens speak of came from the Big Bang or some old guy in the sky. Well, it's actually not irrelevant because the metaphysical structure of the universe is actually the topic we're covering. When Group Soul Ra communicates that the galactic neighborhood has only one important statement to deliver, and given the fact that we're seriously scrutinizing this stuff, we have quite a few questions to ask ourselves here. Why only one important statement? What is the one original thought? And why is the one original thought so wholeheartedly central to the divine, extraterrestrial message being handed down to Earth? I believe we are simply being given the mystery behind the machinations. All of the creation is part of one original thought. No matter how you slice and divide things, everything connects back to its source somehow. The source, of course, being the infinite unitive fabric of reality that binds all that exists. Therefore, the real fruit of the Law of One channelings is to not only understand why it's ideal to resonate with the One Original Thought, but also how to do so. Here we are, smacked in the face with the fact that the aliens are here, not landing on the White House lawn, but instead preaching a path of transcendence out of the simulation. If we accept that there's truth to enlightenment, the idea that there's some mystical way to properly discipline your personality and develop the capability to transcend flesh itself, enlightened aliens speaking secrets through what's known in general occultism as the Veil of Forgetfulness is a type of Independence Day that no one saw coming. Circling back from our theological crisis spurring questions about a potential space government bound to secrecy by a divine mandate of free will, we are then faced with a desire to debunk the cohesive logic system surmising the so-called Law of One, so we can do right by skepticism and not just throw out history's most interesting AMA, because there's a few things that seem outlandish at first. Interplanetary Parliament and Esoteric Truth are part and parcel with Ra's message, and understanding the dichotomy between veiled and unveiled existence as a state of being akin to forgetting and remembering connects the omnipotent power of free will to our meager human existence. And no, not forgetting and remembering what you had for lunch yesterday, but more so along the lines of logic that dictate that those who practice the art of vividly recalling their dreams and writing them down in the morning tend to bring about the increased likelihood of experiencing lucid dreams. The bigger picture here points to remembering past lives or any other type of experiential modality in a body that is not necessarily human. It should not be forgotten that the raw context roots come from a firm and steady investigation into the UFO phenomena, before branching into meta-analysis of first encounters. An interesting manifestation that arises from a wide variety of UFO contacts is a type of memory loss, something we relate to most directly through the fact that we forget our dreams upon waking. With the greater connection being made linking space-time and time-space, veiled and unveiled existence, and the mystical sense of remembering and forgetting, we now have an established frame of reference for understanding free will as an agent that binds heaven and earth. Calling the realm of proper resonance with the one original thought, heaven or nirvana, grants secularist thinking the first advantage it has ever had over the blind faith so characteristic of modern religion. We're being given a new set of tools to help us understand the human condition, most flagrantly information related to what it means to be a divine citizen of an intergalactic eternity. We're instructed that we've been tricked by the flesh, bound to samsara, and left to grapple with all this while working a shitty job to pay off the crippling debt from predatory student loans. After Ra shoots down materialism and reinforces the ancient adage, mind over matter, free will acting as a force that both separates and unifies our awareness with all that exists, the one infinite creator, helps create a framework that allows us to better understand our consciousness by knowing how to properly explore it. 
All that confusing stuff I said earlier about veiled and unveiled existence is simplified by knowing what the veil is. Forgetting. By definition, in order to experience veiled existence, one must walk through what is known in general occultism as the veil of forgetting. Forgetting begets remembering, and this helps clarify my earlier statements about free will acting as a force that unifies heaven and earth. To put all of this simply, earthly intelligence, or rather Yahweh's intelligence, is confused as to its proper relationship with the mysterious intelligent infinity we're now being faced with. Sound familiar? The one original thought is the something that exists instead of nothing. It is the all-encompassing unitive stuff that exists as both creation and creator. It is the heart of metaphysical material, the roots of the human condition, and cuts to the very heart of consciousness awakening within the personality. The one original thought is the fundamental intention or purpose behind the creation of the universe and is closely linked to concepts of a godhead or source energy. The one original thought can also be understood as a sort of divine blueprint or cosmic GPS, expressing that the terrible way things are now may truly be some kind of mistake. But it is indeed not irreconcilable, as this was simply the most effective path realized for the creator to awaken into self-awareness. This all ultimately boils down to Ra's claim that the Confederation of Planets in the service of the Infinite Creator has only one important statement. All things, all of life, all of the creation is part of one original thought. Understanding what it means to live in resonance with the one original thought is perhaps the universalized spiritual message that connects the cultural legacy of history's most colorful esoteric practices to the Law of One channelings. Speaking of cross comparisons with other religions, let's take a peek at the Hidden Hand AMA's interpretation of Genesis as it's relative to our exploration of the one original thought. This may have been covered briefly in the last video, but this is the type of series to go over every meticulous detail with a fine tooth comb. So, to quote the Gospel of John, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, let's cross-reference this with the Hidden Hand AMA, a channel text from a mere 15 years ago, as relative to the Bible being... Uh, literally ancient. In the beginning, there is the Infinite One. This is the source of all. Intelligent infinity, it is the undifferentiated absolute. Within it is unlimited potential, waiting to become. Think of it as the uncarved block of your Taoist traditions. Infinite intelligence, becoming aware of itself, seeks to experience itself, and the one infinite creator is born, or manifest, this appears to your third density comprehension as space. In effect, the creator is a point of focused infinite consciousness or awareness into infinite intelligent energy. The one infinite creator, also becoming self-aware, seeks to, to experience itself as creator, and in so doing begins the next step down in the creational spiral. The one infinite creator, in focusing its infinite intelligence, becomes intelligent energy, which you could call the Great Central Sun, and divides itself into smaller portions of itself that can then in turn experience themselves as creators or central suns. In other words, each central sun or creator is a step down in conscious awareness or distortion from the original thought of creation. So in the beginning was not the word, but thought. The word is thought expressed and made manifest as creator. Now, with side conversations regarding the Western world's piss-poor empiric reach into metaphysical thought not being understated, we're also given a reminder that much of humanity's esoteric knowledge has been lost in translation throughout the ages, with the law of one's original thought being a definition much worthier of exploration in contrast to the biblical word. 
There's another tangent here expressing the mechanics that go into the imaginative power of creation, which would allow us to better understand the logic systems differentiating the one original thought and the biblical word. But as of right now, I am once again going to recommend Neville Goddard's book, Feeling is a Secret, for those that are looking for immediate practical application of esoteric philosophy, as opposed to my lengthy intellectual musings. Anyways, session 1.0 of the material, right? We've covered a lot so far, our breakdown of the material briefly covering the shocking weight of extraterrestrial secret existence while also exploring the one original thought as an esoteric map of the natural universe. Before moving forward, let's keep in mind that immediately after introducing themselves, Ra expresses that our known material universe is illusory, with the true reality existing in its wholeness as the one original thought. This is especially relevant as it's related to the 21st century's longing for secularized spirituality, and here we are being handed the secrets that bind heaven and earth together on a silver platter. You are not part of a material universe. You are part of a thought. It's worth mentioning that macrocosmic consciousness is communicating to macrocosmic consciousness. Right now, earth is still in its majority creating a reality that enforces faith in matter over mind. We are instructed by the Confederation of Planets that this dichotomy is not only meaningful, but also intensely relevant to our ways of being. Skepticism of the Law of One message, not Ra's existence, which is a separate matter, begins at debunking the One Original Thought as a valid, if not more effective, way of being. So, as of right now, we will begin exploring whether or not the shoe fits, so to speak. The fact that we are anything at all, the Creator, Ask us the question what it is exactly that we are creating, and why we are creating it. Learning responsible manners of creation is part and parcel to the Law of One philosophy, and something that we'll explore in more depth in future content. Moving on from the mind over matter can of worms that we just opened up, we're met with some difficulties in Ra finding a proper channel to speak through before being ready to answer Don's first question. But I'm going to pull a card I've played in recent past and end the episode after talking about only session 1.0 of the material. Around the time of my last upload, I was suffering from carpal tunnel and took an extended break from content creation. But I'm ready to get back into the grind with some new healthy habits to boot. This video was meant to be a quick little upload to remind everyone that I'm still here, and it felt pretty nice to have such a focused episode on perhaps one of the most all-encompassing concepts that the material introduces. Thank you all so much for watching. Feel free to DM me on Reddit or Twitter for an invite to my <clears throat> mostly inactive Discord server, and stay tuned for more Law of One content. See ya!